Uh, here's some color adjust settings. So I, I, like I did before, I have some basic RGB values that I could change around here. Um, you can do like a white balance in case you need to. Let's say that was white. And I can adjust based on that. Um, reset it here. You can also play around with saturation, um, like that there, if you want to like desaturate something just a little bit, something like that. That's pretty good there. Um, you also have, you can play with the black level and the white level. Uh, I think that you should make it a tripod. Um, in case you need, th this is just really good if you need to make some small tweaks to a camera. It's kind of like a proc amp where it's like not affecting uh, the camera itself, it's just reflecting yeah, the, the um, input PCC into the switcher. Um, you could also affect the transparency uh, so here. Um, so I'm just going to layer this on top, 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 top of something. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the clock in on the background layer, but then I'm going to put this in an overlay on top of it. Now because it's full opaqueness, um, we can't see the clock under it, but then I could go over here and reduce that like that and then see what's under it there. So that's a pretty cool way in case we need to add some transparency to something that doesn't have it already. Um, so that's that there. Uh, color key in case we needed to key something out, we can do that here. Um, so let's get a good point here that has a lot of one color. So if I'm going to go here and I wanted to key out blue here, so now it's in an overlay. I'm going to put something a little bit better behind it. Um, if I wanted to key this out, I could select color key here, select a color, and then start playing around here with um, some of the presets. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with one or something and go off of that. You could kind of tweak it over here if you want to. Um, you want to pull in more of one other color. Change the filter to see like how exact you want to get. Um, obviously, it's not a very good key that we're do dealing with, but it's at least you can show the point. So we can use VMix as a way to um, do a green screen or something like that. Works really well with a virtual set. So for example, if I wanted to get this person here in the center, um, let's say I wanted to put her in the virtual set, um, but I wanted to kind of crop this out. It's going to look like garbage because I'm going to zoom in a lot. But let's say I just wanted to use this as a green screen. Um, uh, which you can actually see working over here in program right now. Um, but I could go do something like that. Then I could go to position. I could zoom in on it um, to do this. And then now if I wanted my virtual set host, I would go over here and set this up to be this person. Oh, whoops, I did that in the wrong one. So if I want to go make talent A, that here, voila, now you have our silly virtual set um, like that. So the keying of vMix is great. It's pretty good, actually. Um, it does a good job of keying things. Um, so we'll use that um, occasionally for situations that we're not using a hardware key or, or on a switcher. Um, you can also loom a key here. So with vMix, you can pull in a key fill inputs, add them as cameras. Um, so if I had like another device, if I had another vMix that I wanted to run as graphics, I could have that spit out key fill on a Blackmagic card and into another card. This the It works as an input on an AJA card, but not an output. And it can't output um, key fill because it won't be able to dual link it in the, in the way it needs to. Um, but a Blackmagic card will let you send out key fill. You could bring them in cameras one and two over here. And then all you need to do is take your fill channel um, and then set the key off of your key input here. Um, let's say it's that, and then you could kind of tweak it here if you need it to be. So that's how you could bring in um, a key fill from another device on uh, on vMix on another one. So that, that's a pretty sneaky way to do that. Um, then over here is some better color correction. I'm just going to undo all the stuff that I have so far. Just stand by. Ah, uh, copy. Um, so if we're looking here, um, we have some basic color correction. It kind of works like other color correctors. Uh, we have the lift gamma gain, and you could drag around, affect things. Um, so it's a good way to add some capability into live streams so you could mix it. Normally, we'll have like a V1 be separate. Um, but in case you need to do something a little, um, you could do that over here. Um, and then you can save presets. Um, for things, so it'll remember things, and you can move them across devices. You can turn it on and off to check it out, um, and it'll even do like an automatic one. But I, I'll get like most automatic things don't trust it necessarily. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's something that you could play around with um, for coloring. 
you could change the position of it. Main is the background layer, so it's this. So like we did before, you could zoom in on things. Um, you could pan things around to like kind of refine things and move things around. You could rotate things. Sil it's it, very silly. The, this number is in terms of pi, not degrees. <laughs> um, so if I wanted to bring it like, you know, one time around, it would be like 3.14. That, that'll bring me 180 degrees. Um, and then two pi is like a full circle, but it's kind of annoying, especially if you want to turn something 90 degrees, you have to be like, oh, what's the math on that? It's like 1.57 or something like that. Um, so kind of annoying that it's based on that number section, but at least you can rotate it. Um, wow, I've actually never tried. Oh, I've never done this before, but yeah, you could rotate on different axes as well here if you wanted to like tweak a horizon or something like that. So that's fun. Um, and then you could also crop things. So this is the left side, this is the right side, um, this is the top, and this is the bottom. And what's great is if you do anything like this, you could reset it all. What's kind of annoying is though, control Z won't work. So if you accidentally grab the wrong thing, for example, um, you can't control Z it. So you'll have to reset it or like, that's why we'll write these numbers down a lot. If like, let's say we're like, oh, I want this to be uh, this size or whatever, something like that. We'll go in and write these down so we have them, especially if we have other inputs that wanna be the same sizes. Um, we'll make sure you write that down. Um, and then let's go into multi-view. Multi-view is one of the most powerful elements of vMix. Um, I basically have 10 layers that I could add to this one input. So if I wanted to add like this to this and this guy on top of it, this here, right now they're all stacking on top of each other, um, but I'm gonna use one of these features over here in a sec to see that. Um, let's say I had all these guys loaded up here. Um, I'm just gonna pick this nine box and it'll automatically sort them out. Uh, but because the main was zoomed in, it looks like that right now, but if I reset it, you'll see it. Um, uh, full screen here, but yeah, this is super powerful. It will preserve transparency and everything. So you could stack things up to 10 layers on top of each other. Um, and then you can turn things on and off if you want. So sometimes if you know like, Hey, I might need this thing here. I'll leave it here unchecked. Um, so it'll always be paired with it. And then when I need it, I'll check it to turn it on. So this is great in case you have like a vMix call or, you know, a Skype guest or something like that and you're a little worried about their connection, you can add here a photo of them. So then that way, if their connection goes down, you could come in here and check it on. Um, so if let's say this is actually full screen. So uh, back to position here, you can get any of these overlay layers um, and change those positions here. So um, it, uh, you could use that to move things around. So if I wanted this to be a full overlay so we could see this example a little bit better, I just do that there and then I just can turn it on it off like this. Um, so yeah, so we'll leave their photo here. So if there's an issue, we can make a shortcut to turn it on or we could come right here and just cut it in. Um, so we'll leave it off most of the time and then turn it on. Um, over here are triggers. Triggers sometimes I find tricky to make actually work. Um, I'm sure it's an order of operations thing, um, but you can have events automatically occur based on certain conditions for this input. So for example, if this is on transition in, once this transitions in, I am saying I want to fade to preview. So this can be, you know, like, I could tie like an, a lower third with something. So if I have overlay one in of this thing, now I should be able to, as soon as I transition this in, overlay input one in of AJA input one will happen. So you'll see this in overlay one, and then I can add a little bit of a delay. Um, but I can't stack them on top of each other. Um, you know, I can't have it do one thing, then the next, then the next. The, for that, I have to write a whole script for, um, but it will do all of them at the same time that have the same trigger um, with their different delay patterns. Um, also over here, what's cool, I haven't really played around with this yet, but like on Countdown Complete, it's great if you're making your own like production clocks um, or um, the audio DB level, if you know, if it, if it, you could kind of make an auto switcher off of this based on people talking. So if it, if you set the threshold to be like DB12 or something, once it receives audio signal above this, it can perform an action based off of it. So um, I'm not really gonna demo it this here because I don't use this that often, um, but you could like turn me on if someone talks above this level or, you know, honestly, I'd probably do like a fade to um, preview here or something like that if I want to do that here. Um, you'll notice this additional mix here. That was an input I didn't cover. Mixes are awesome. Um, 
and but so here you can assign things to certain mixes, which you could also do in shortcuts. Um, I'm actually going to come over here and demo that. Um, I'll probably edit this back in, see the beginning here. Um, so, so if I come over here, there's one input that's kind of hidden from the main menu. Um, if I go to this up arrow, there's this mix input. I could have up to four mixes. Mix one is always your normal preview program bus, but this gives you another basically ME if you're familiar with ME based switchers. So this gives me another layer of preview program. So if I have this in preview here, I can see what I have in preview and program. So this is actually the program of this, but in the small window here, I see what the preview is. And then I could use these drop down menus to um, pick something here, and then I get some transition control. Um, you don't get everything, but you do get um, most things. Um, for example, I can't do like overlay one through four in a mix input. I have to go into the multi view here if I wanted to overlay something over this. So it'd be kind of like a normal input, um, but you do get to see a preview program here. So this is really great if you have, uh, or the, the two cases that we use this a lot, one, or if we have any onset displays, a lot of times you'll, if you're using like a black magic switcher or whatever, you'll just assign an ME to be that monitor. So then you have a full bus control, can switch around what's in there in addition to your main line. Um, I can also, um, you, when what I really like using it for are return feeds for vMix call guests. Um, because I can't, for a vMix call guest, in order to change what video source they're getting, you right click on it and select it here. And that's output two. And then output two, you need to check what's assigned to it. So that's kind of buried under a lot of things. It's hard to see what they're seeing. You need to check things and remember names of things. And they also are numbers of things. So if things shift around, you know, if you move your inputs around, um, that all of those plans uh, can get ruined. I like the mixes because I could say, okay, I want the caller to get video source output four. I'm going to go over here make sure output four is input one. And then I'm going to leave mix two as input one. So now I can move stuff around without affecting mix one or worrying about it. Um, but then I could also get the benefit of seeing what they see. I just look what's on the right half of this monitor and I know at a quick glance that they're seeing the correct thing. Um, so it's great in case you need to switch what's in their feed because now I have a switchable bus here in case they want to like see themselves or not see themselves or see a PowerPoint or something like that. I could do that from here. Um, so I like using these for any like remote caller returns. Um, so. Yeah, I wish I remembered to mention that earlier, but it, it's so hidden, which is kind of annoying. I wish it was in the main menu, but it's only in this like drop up menu. So anyway, um, I'm just going to go back to some more input settings. Um, tally lights don't really need to worry about this too much, but you could kind of get more specific about tallies here. Um, PTZ, if this was a cam PTZ camera, I could control it. So if I had, you know, uh, normally Sony Visca does most things. Um, so I could have it on Sony Visca, type the IP address in, and I get full PTZ control over it, um, which is super awesome um, to be able to do that. And then I can save, um, maybe this is like another day thing too, because I can save. Um, kind of like on uh, the Panasonic, you could get presets, and that remembers the XY position and the zoom. Um, I can get vMix to remember. Basically, if I set some a camera up in vMix and I save it as a virtual, um, I will be able to remember that position. And so when I bring that in program, it will position to that. Or you could set like a shortcut up. So when you bring it in preview, you could have the camera move for you. Um, so it's cool. That way you could kind of remember different PTZ locations and just like go to them immediately, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, but we don't really need to worry about that right now. And then advances over here. Um, certain inputs allow me to add some delays and some filters, though I don't really um, do, I haven't really done any filters. I kind of don't really know what this refers to, but um, if it's a video input, so let me bring in AJ1 again. Um, so if I'm looking here, I could actually delay this video feed specifically a little bit. So if I want to delay that 30 frames or something, now you see me a bit delayed. It's like a whole second behind. So. There's that. I'm going to turn that off because that is affecting the, um, it tells you how many megabytes are allowed or allocated for it. So um, uh, I can, or sorry, megabits are allow, allocated for it. So I can um, know how much I'm affecting the graphics card or something like that.
So, and then I also have some copy from things. So if I have a bunch of inputs that we want to have the same settings, I could come over here, get some color adjusting keys, the multi-view layout, stuff like that. Um, so that's a pretty cool way to speed up transitions. Um, also, if you have something in multi-view here, um, I could go in here and just click and drag and move stuff around. Um, you can't really zoom it as far as I know, um, but I can like really quickly shuffle around. I could zoom in. Oh, it's shift drag. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you, Perry. Oh. oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know you could do that. So, but yeah, this gives you like a more visual way of doing that kind of stuff. You can use this to zoom in for detail. Um, you could get some lines here if you're trying to align stuff. Um, and um, vMix also has waveforms and stuff like that. So you can view that over here in the multi-view as well.